بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين بالقاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد Dear viewers السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We thank Allah سبحانه وتعالى أن أهل البيت عليهم السلام that have blessed us to be sitting discussing the holy verses of Quran and the narrations of Ahl al-Bayt alayhim as We have started Surah Al-Baqarah. If you have followed us, we have we talked about Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in the first chapter, Alif Lam Mim. We discussed it. Dalik al-Kitabu la Raybi fi, Wadan al-Muttaqin. Who are those pious people? We want to you know who are those pious people. So inshallah, we will be amongst those people, and inshallah, Quran will be a guidance for us. Because if you remember. In the past, in the previous episode, we discussed about those people who Allah won't guide. The one who is extravagant, the one who is a disbeliever, the one who is a liar. Who is a, and we discussed about it in the previous episode. So Allah says the book of Allah, this book is guidance for the pious. Who are those pious people? Allah says, الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ Pious people are those who believe in the unseen, number one, and maintain the prayer, number two, and spend out of what we have provided for them. Three characteristics Allah has mentioned right now in this verse. So again, in order for Quran to be guidance for us, we need to be pious. In order for, need for us to be pious, we have to have these three characteristics. What are these three characteristics? Number one, يؤمنون بالغيب, believing, believing in, un, in the unseen. وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ And they maintain and establish the prayer. وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ And spend out of what we have provided for them. يُؤْمِنُونَ Iman. What is Iman? That we need to be believer. Sometimes believer is on the other side of disbeliever, which is Islam. Person who says, أَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَى اللَّهُ أَشْهَدُ أَنَّا مُحَمَّدًا رَسُولَ اللَّهُ he becomes a believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet Muhammad. On the other hand, it's a disbeliever. That's one group of people. Another group of people, it's about believer, which is on the other hand, side of ignorance. When we don't believe in something, we are ignorant about it also. The ignorance makes us do not believe in it. And believer, on the other hand, sort of non-believer in action. So we have certainty in heart. Some people have it, some people don't have it. Those who have it, they become believer. Believer is an acknowledgement and affirmation, which some people don't have it, some people have it. That becomes those who have it becomes a believer. Those who don't have it, they don't, they're not a believer. And believer in action, inshallah, we will explain them one after one. So believe is, as the Imam have said, number one, First is the tight, we have a knot in our hearts, believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, believing in Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, believing in Ahlul Bayt alayhi wa salam, believing in the day of Qiyamah, believing in the Holy Quran that is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, believing in Raj'a, believing in all what we have as our belief, as our madhab. First, in heart, that needs to be there. And then, needs affirmation. I say it. La ilaha illallah. Allahu Akbar. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. Ashadu anna aliyan waliyullah. Ashadu, I bear witness, we read within our du'as, there are different du'as that you say, Ashadu anna al-mawta haq. Ashadu anna nakaran wa nakira haq. It's in, if I remember correctly, in ziyarat I mean Allah, if I remember correctly, in one of our ziyarah or dua, I shahada anna al-mawta haq, I bear witness that death is the truth uh, and exists. Quran exists, Prophet exists, all of this we bear witness. So uh, that's affirmation. So first heart and then affirmation verbally and then amalun bil arkan. This belief which is in the heart that comes into our ver verbally, we say it, it should be resonating in our actions. That becomes a complete believer, a complete package. If not, it is not complete. So in order for us to be true believer, 
in addition to having certainty, in addition to saying it that I'm a believer, we must act upon it. Some people, they have it in their heart. And unfortunately, we see some people say that I believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but who said so that I need to pray in order for me to show appreciation to him? I say, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, that's the way I appreciate him. I believe in a heart. Who said that I need to wear hijab? That hijab is an internal hijab that I'm keeping myself modest, but outside I don't need to wear hijab. I can have all sort of makeups and I can have my body to be shown. Who said so? Well, the same Allah that you believe in, send messenger of Allah, send messenger for you and I to, to, to be educated. And then that messenger of Allah has brought us Ahlul Bayt السلام, and to us Ahlul Bayt السلام, and they brought us a teaching. Those teachings said do and so and so, pray, hajab, khums, zakat, hajj, and all of our wajibat and muharramat, what we, what we are obligated to act upon and what we need to abstain from. So it's very important. I need to analyze myself. First, again, Iman, believe in heart. If I see I have problem in action, I have to go back and diagnose my heart. Where is the problem? I need to increase that certainty and yaqeen in heart. Because if I have certainty and yaqeen in my heart and I verbally say it, that will resonate more in action. If not, if my action in front of people is something, behind the back is something else, well, I have to go back in my yaqeen, my certainty. Where is it that I have a problem? Which part of my certainty needs to be fixed, needs to be restarted, needs to be recalibrated, needs to be fed information from the narrations of Ahlul Bayt from the stories of the lives of Ahlul Bayt and Quran. Where is it that is the problem? Because that shows in our action. So saying it verbally, believing in heart, and also acting upon it. So that is Iman. Yu'minuna, believe in what? This belief that needs to be in our heart and verbally affirm it and accept it needs to be in unseen. But before going in unseen, unfortunately, some people believe in heart and believe verbally, but it's so difficult for them to bring it into action. It's so difficult. We might be a good believer in one aspect, but when it comes to another aspect of the religion, we are short. We are low. We don't have that much belief. We don't have yaqeen and certainty. For example, when it comes to salah, my salah, all of them on time. But when it comes to khums and zakat and giving charity, it becomes difficult for me. Shaitan plays. Some people, they go other hand. Salah and zakat and khums, they are good. When it comes to hajj, he is, he is mustati, it means religiously the conditions has applied to him and he must go to hajj. But Sheikh, seven, eight thousand dollars, nine thousand dollars less or more, I have to spend to go to Hajj. Why I need? I just pray here. I thank Allah Subhanahu wa Taala this way. Some people hijab. Some people. Everybody. We have to find where is our weak point. Where is the problem that we have? As we have said, religion to be complete package of aqidah, believe, act, the religious duties, the laws, the fatawis that we have, our maraja ahkam, and then akhlaq, morality. Which one of these three I need to build? Which one of these I'm lacking, I'm behind that I need to establish? So we have to be very careful that this belief of ours, it's in all aspects of the religion, not one completely yes, the other one completely no. No. All aspects of our lives that the religion has taught us everything, we have to move forward all. يؤمنون بالغيب They believe those pious people where Quran guides them, these pious people have the characteristic. The first one is them believing in the unseen. الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ Unseen. A lot of the youth discuss and they want to have, as we say, rational reasoning behind everything that we do. Well, this doesn't exist today. It's from the time of Prophet Musa that some people say, okay, God that we don't see, how can we worship? Allah, Allah says within the Holy Quran, Bani Israel told 
uh, Prophet Musa ala Nabi Nabi alayhi salam, how can we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where we cannot see? Let us see Allah, we will worship Him. See, unfortunately, when it comes, there are, there are other things that exist within our lives which we agree, even though we have not seen, it's completely unseen, but we see the trace of it, we see the signs of it, and we agree. For example, we walk by a beautiful, gigantic, very nicely designed and architected building. Something very unique, something very bold. If somebody tells us, well, this building came to existence by itself, we will laugh at him. We will laugh at his intellect. We will laugh at his rationale. How can you say that this building came to existence without anybody? Definitely had architects, definitely had engineers and plans and days and months and years that put into uh, effort was put for this building to stand upright. We, have we seen, maybe the architect had, maybe he died 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, 100 years ago. The engineers and all the, those people who worked on this building, they don't exist anymore. They died a long time ago. But we believe because we see something that it exists. And definitely this has somebody built it. Or for example, uh, the frequency of the satellite. For example, right now my phone, we receive signal. And, Hello, salam alaikum. We talk. Do we see the frequency? No. But exist. How we know it? We know it because somebody somewhere else is calling me to that satellite. That satellite sending me the frequency and I'm able to hear and see even though I don't see it. The oxygen. There are many other examples. Many. I'm just bringing a couple of them. That there are many things within our lives that we don't see. We don't hear. We cannot uh, feel it with our five senses. But we accept it. That exists. Believers are those who believe in the unseen, which there are many things which are unseen. We haven't seen the Prophet. We, have, we don't see Allah. We are not able to see Allah. Because our capability and Allah is not something to be seen because it doesn't have body parts and a discussion with an aqaid and inshallah. One day we get a chance to start a series on aqaid or we can have, we can search on YouTube finding lectures about aqaid and belief and discussing about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the unity of Allah and the oneness of Allah and so on and so forth. So believing in unseen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Prophet, Imams, we haven't seen them. We haven't seen the day of judgment, but we believe in it. It's unseen for us. Raja'a, returns of the amma after the reappearance of our beloved Imam. It's based on the Quran. We believe in it. Intercession, we believe in it. We haven't seen it yet. It hasn't happened yet on the day of judgment because the day of judgment hasn't happened yet. So. A lot of our belief is based on the un, it's based on unseen, which Allah says, pious person. Again, in order for him to be guided by the Holy Quran, he needs to be a believer in the unseen. So we see the trace, we see the trade, we see the signs of Allah's existence and all the unseen. That's one meaning of believing unseen. Another meaning that commentators have given us in that believing unseen, the unseen, that this individual's action in front of the people and in the unseen where other people are not able to see him is the same thing. If he is with a group of people, he is traveling, his salah is on time. When he is by himself, also his salah is on time, in time, on time. Basically, he is a believer in public and he's a believer in the unseen, unseen here, commentators have said, unseen, unseen from the people that he believes. That belief of his resonates. He doesn't commit sin in front of the people. And when he is in his room where nobody else can see him and kind of he is unseen for other people, he doesn't commit sin either. He is respecting other people in front of people. When he goes and he's within his family, he also has respect. So that is also one of the meaning of believing in the unseen, which is very, very important. It's a very important action plan. That everything I do, let's think about it. Anything that I do in front of the people, am I going to do the same thing behind their back? I'm by myself in my house. Nobody's there. Will I pray my prayers on time? Will I not commit sin? Will I be that good person to my family where I'm going with the people? Am I going to be the same person? Some people, when they come outside, they're smiling with other people, laughing, encouraging, so on and so forth. But when they go to their house, 
they are arrogant, they, are, they have a very acrimonious demeanor. Well, this is not accepted. This means he doesn't believe in the unseen, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is outside, is also inside. So that, that's a very important action plan that we have to keep in mind that our action in the unseen and in front of the people should be the same. Unseen, we are believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all the things that basically part of our aqeedah. And last but not least, the commentators have said that believing in the unseen it's believing in the Imam that they cannot see. Some narration, inshallah. We will try to bring it with the next episode because our time is finished. We are going to bring some ahadith that unseen is that during the time of the people who don't have access to their Imam, they are true believers, inshallah, if they act upon their belief. We will conclude asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the appearance of our beloved Imam Mahdi ajallah ta'ala fa'adu sharif. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. اللهم كن لوليك الحجة من الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى أبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكن واربك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين